Hello, everyone. So a uh, couple of months ago, I also recorded a video on how you can use a collab, Google Collab instance to host uh, LLM models and query it from anywhere. So this time I'm bringing something similar, but this time instead of the Google Collab serving as your hosting instance, uh, this time I'm showing how you can use a Kaggle Notebook instance to host the model. The process is quite simple, is quite simple and also very similar to the previous one, but I think it's worth it to, to go through. Okay, so similar to the other one, this also could be an interesting option for people that are developing an application that needs to host models uh, locally, but they before they scale up for some, maybe for, to serve more users or something similar, uh, and that would require to rent uh, VM or um, expensive cloud services, you can just use Google Collab or in this case, Kaggle Notebook to host your model. It will be like a, a free VM with powerful CPU, GPUs, and even TPUs in this case uh, to serve your model. So it can be quite handy in those kinds of occasions. So in the, here I created this Kaggle Notebook, which I will link into the, the comments. And uh, we will go through this notebook of what I have here. In case you prefer, I have also written a blog post basically going through the same things, uh, describing a few extra things here. So make sure to also give it a look. And as a reminder, I also have a blog post on how you can do it with Colab, as well as a video uh, going through the code and teaching it as well. So I will also link both all of these sources here. OK, so to start, I will go through the Kaggle Notebook instance and click here in Edit so we can go through cell by cell what's going on. OK, so we have a few prerequisites. Uh, the first one is the most obvious is to have a Kaggle account and be able to create Kaggle notebooks. So in case you don't know what Kaggle is, Kaggle is a data science platform. It's mostly famous for hosting uh, machine learning and AI competitions. And nowadays, they are very diverse. So if you are into this, I really recommend you to give it a try. But we also have more things like a lot of data sets. So if you want to, if you're looking for a specific data, it's very likely that you have, we'll be able to find something here. Uh, they also have the forums and discussion that people exchange ideas is also very, very fruitful. Uh, I've learned a lot over the years on Kaggle discussions. But in this case, what you are going to use is the notebooks. It's basically a Jupyter notebook that they link here into code. So you can go here uh, and create a notebook. Uh, and this is what I have done here. So this is a notebook that I have created. Uh, the advantage of this is that you have an environment uh, free here that you can choose uh, different options to accelerate. Let's say they link here as accelerator. So you have internet access, and you can also have uh, smaller TPUs, like the T4, uh, two T4s, uh, P100. But you can also even use TPUs here, if that's the case. So you have a powerful environment for free that you can use here. The second one will be to use ngrok. So if I open here, ngrok is a uh, uh, basically an API gateway. So it, it does a bunch of things here. So if you are curious, you can go here and take a look. But in our case, what's important is that any Grok will allow us to uh, access externally, remotely, uh, the server that we are hosting inside of the Kaggle notebook. OK, so let's go here through the code, and you will have a better understanding of what's happening. OK, so just as a quick check, we can go here and see uh, what kind of GPU uh, I have in the instance. So the notebook instance is loading here. And I will also just pre-run a few of the cells here. First thing, I'm just going to take a look into the GPU information to make sure that I have the environment that, I'm, that I actually want. And then we are going to install here the Olama uh, script. We're going to run it, the Olama script here into the, the instance to make sure that it's available, as well as ins installing the Py and Grok, that is the Python API to use any Grok, and also the Olama one. So the, also a good thing that these uh, notebook instances, they have a, a bunch of pre-installed libraries that people usually use for AI and machine learning use cases. But in this case, since it's two uh, more specific ones, I need to install them manually. So we can go up a little bit, and you can see that I have the two Tesla GPUs here in my environment. OK, so that's quite good. Uh, yeah, the script is already installed. And I have also installed the two libraries that I want. So let's load these dependencies that we have here. 
And here I already have a few auxiliary functions that I will explain once I go through uh, the code. The first parameter that we define is the ngrok port that is going to be, let's say, exposed and the one that we are going to use internally. So here I'm using 11.43.4, which is the default OLAMA port. So once you start our OLAMA server in your environment, which um, is the thing that I'm doing here, by default, uh, the model will be served in this port. So just to make it easy, I'm also going to serve it on ngrok using the same default one, but this uh, can be changed if you want. The first function that we run here is the start OLAMA server that if we go a little bit up here, it's very simple. So it's just like running OLAMA serve into the terminal, into the, the, the terminal of the environment. So I run it here with Python just to make it easy, uh, but it's basically this single command. The second function that I'm running there is just this one that sounds a little bit complex, but it does what it does is programmatically checking if uh, there is a service being, let's say, running, if there is a running service into a specific part. Uh, so what I'm doing here is that I'm starting the OLAMA server and then I'm just running a check to make sure that it's running, right? So just a way to do this programmatically. Uh, you can see from the logs here, everything seems to be working and then I can actually set up the ngrok tunnel. So as we said before, the idea of ngrok is to be able to expose the server uh, to be queried, prompted remotely. Uh, what I, and the way that I do is just to run this function here. So you can see that I do two things. One is to retrieve the secrets that I will explain in a second. And the other one is to run this uh, setup and ngrok tunnel, which is this function here, which is actually quite simple as well. So I get the secret that I want, the authentication token, and then I just set it uh, using the ngrok Python API, then do run the connection here. Okay, and then I just return the tunnel. So very simple to do as well. Uh, and related to the secrets, uh, what I do here is that to set up the ngrok tunnel, I need to sign up to ngrok and create an authentication token. So the way that I do it is that you can go to ngrok, uh, login, or if you have an account, you can just log in. If you don't have it, you, you, you need to sign up. In my case, I have an account already, so I can just go to this link here. Uh, that is the ngrok dashboard. And if I go here in getting started, your authentication token, I will see this panel here. So your token will be here. So here it's uh, obfuscated because I don't want to show it, but if you do the same process, you will see your token here. So you can just copy, and the way that you can access it on a Kaggle notebook is to go here on settings. Let me go down a little bit. Yeah, here, where it's running. I can go here on actually on add-ons, secrets, and I have a few secrets here. So in my case, I already have one setup, but if I want to add another one, it will be here. I can post, post my value here. Uh, let's say something like this, and the label of the, uh, of the secret that I want to show. So it could be uh, API token, something, right? Uh, in my case, I already set it up. So I'm using this ngrok out token uh, to be the secret holding my ngrok authentication token. So when I run this function, it retrieves it using this utility function from Kaggle that I am importing here, right? So it's a library that already comes installed in Python. It's just a way to retrieve the secret that I'm uh, adding here. So once I have the tunnel set up, I can actually uh, pull the model and start querying it. So it's quite simple. One important thing is that uh, this utility function that I'm using here, it prints the uh, URL that I'm going to query. So this is something that you need to keep handy because you're, we are going to use it. Okay, so for this initial test, the model that I'm going to use is the Gemma 3N, which is a smaller version of the Gemma 3 model that is more suited for very specific use cases. So this is the version of the Gemma model that I'm going to serve, the Gemma 3N, which is mostly optimized for on-device performance. So it's a very small model, but also a strong one. We can see even since some benchmarks here. As you can see, it's supported by Olama, which is the way that we're going to serve it. Okay, so it's a very good model, a very good small model. Uh, so we can run it here. And first thing that I, we want to see 
is that once we have the uh, ngrok tunnel set up and the Olama server is already running, as we have done, we can actually just prompt the model. And we have a few ways that we can do it. So basically, what I have now is a server that is exposing this model uh, publicly in this case, right? So we can query, query in a bunch of ways. Maybe the simplest one is just query from your terminal. So we, uh, we are going to do it here. Uh, you can see that I already have Olama running here in my environment, right? So I can just open my terminal and query the model. So what I'm printing here is the two things that I need to set up. So on my terminal, once I have Olama running on my machine, I can just export this environment variable here that will set up the uh, the host, which um, my local machine will be querying on. So remember, uh, the Olama server is running on the Kaggle notebook, on the Kaggle servers, Google servers, servers, and I'm going to query on my machine. So I have the console here, my terminal. I'm going to put this uh, environment variable, so all I'm knows where to query it, and then I can just run this command here that is to pull the model. All I'm gonna run Gemma 3n e4b. So when I run it, uh, what I'm going to do is that it's going to pull the model, so it's showing the logs here on my machine, but it's actually pulling the model on the server. So yeah, basically it's going to pull the model here on the server. Since uh, the cell is not updating the logs here, you won't see it, but my Kaggle instance is just downloading the model, which is this part here, right? So we are going to wait a few seconds and once the model is downloaded, we can start querying it. So, okay, so the model download is finished. So uh, now that the model is up and running, we can actually just start querying it. So. Let's see. Let's just ask anything. What day is today? Okay, so yeah, you can see uh, model is responding, right? So everything seems to be looking fine. So this was the first and maybe simplest way to query the, the model just using the terminal, but we can uh, query the models in other ways. Uh, Second way would be maybe from a notebook. You are running experiments or doing anything else. You can actually co uh, query it with Python code or any way that you want. So for this, we are going to load the Olama Python API. And I also have this helper function here, which is quite simple. So the way that it works is that first we use the Olama Python API to set up the client. And we also, again, pass here the URL that we are going to query. So in this case, this same Kaggle notebook is hosting the model and also querying it. But if I had opened another Kaggle notebook to query it, if I open a no, a Jupyter notebook on my machine, on your machine, a Google Colab notebook, I, I would be querying this model in the same way because, again, the URL is public here, right? So we can uh, just access, access it from anywhere. So it's the same way. Uh, if I had not pulled the model already, which I did on my terminal, I could just pull it here, uh, but we can just run it here and it's probably going, not going to do anything else, right? So maybe it's just going to try to pull again, but it's, we'll see that it's already in cache and then we can start querying the model. The way that we query the model is uh, using this function here, which is this one, right? So what it does is that it basically parses the information into a payload that's going to send through the client API. It's very simple. So we use the chat function from the client. Uh, we specify which model we are going to use. And then the messages, right? We use uh, a list of uh, our dictionaries. Set up the, the role and also the prompt. Uh, the prompt is the same as the other one. Uh, why is the sky blue? And we can ask it here. We can prompt the model. Okay, so we see few logs and we can see the output here. So if it, uh, we were streaming the output, we would see, let's say, le letter by letter. But in this case, uh, everything is just came up all at once. So we can see the output of the model here. And one also good thing from this model is that we can also query Gemma 3 uh, using other languages. So since it's multilingual, in this case, I'm just asking the same question here in Portuguese. Por que o céu azul? So it's the same model, it's the same client, the same public URL using the same model ID, uh, just using a 
querying in Portuguese. And we will see the same output. But in this case, since I'm querying the model in Portuguese, the output is also supposed to be in Portuguese. Okay. Another cool thing that we can do using uh, Python, the same Python API, is just to swap the models. So in this case, I we were using the smaller Gemma 3N model, which is designed for uh, mobile or device uh, application. But we can also swap the models, the model uh, for a different one. In this case, I'm going to swap for Gemma 3, the 27 billion parameter one, which is the larger Gemma models that we can also run it here. Uh, and I can also do it just by running the, the Python Olam API. The same way that I'm doing here, if I wanted, I just could pull up my terminal and run this command, which would be uh, olamr one and the name of the new model and the server, which is remotely, would also update. So in this case of this model, it makes a bit more sense to use this setup because uh, at least on my machine, I'm not able to run this model in a very good way. So it makes more sense to have like a remote server using it. In the case of Kaggle, as we saw, we can even use uh, larger machines like a, a P100 GPU or even a TPU that could be served with a model here. So uh, we, can we can really take advantage of these free resources that we have here. So Gemma 25 billion model is a little bit larger, so it's going to take a little bit more time. Uh, once the model is downloaded, we will query the models in the same way. So it seems that the model was loaded. Okay, so uh, now that we swap it model, I'm going to also query it, but in even another different way. So in the previous one, we used the Olama API to query the models, but uh, just to, to show it here, uh, we can really query it in any way. So in this case, I'm going to just query the model using Python in the most simplest way, which is using uh, the request lib library, library uh, using basically uh, basic requests. Uh, so yeah, this is a very simple function here. It just uh, prepares the payload in a similar way, very similar to the other one. It just needs a little bit more code to handle uh, images if we are passing that. I need to load the image, convert it to uh, encode it in base64, and just uh, add it to the payload so that we can send it. But other than that, it's just very, very similar. Uh, and then we can query it. So I'm going to query it using this, this function here. That is the simplest one. And we can see the output in a few seconds. Remember this time, since we swapped the model, we are going to query the larger Gemma model. So the output is a little bit slower, but should be better as well. OK, so we can see the output here. Since I use the stream mode here, uh, we are getting uh, letter by letter here, which is a nicest, nicer output as well. But basically, you can see that the, we are able to query the model in, in the same way. And just to exemplify, we, uh, since I swapped the models, uh, this larger version of Gemma is also multimodal. I think that the smaller one was supposed to be multimodal yet as well, but I think that the version that Olama support uh, is not working multimodal, it seems. OK, so I'm going to download an image, which is this logo for the Gemma 3N version. And I'm going to use it in a query. So it's the same function, but I'm asking it to describe the, the image. OK, and I'm passing the path to the image. And you can see that basically the Gemma model is quite good, actually, with images. And we'll be able to describe in a good way. So it was able to read it, the, the code, and uh, add a basic description. So with this, we finished the tutorial here. So if you think that is interesting, go take a look. If you are interested in this kind of setup, also make sure to check out the other video that does a similar thing, but using Google Colab instead of Kaggle. So uh, since both of them, they, you have a little bit of limited resources, right? You don't really have unlimited GPUs. You can just use it for, I think, 30 or 40 hours, depending on your uh, subscription. Uh, so maybe if you have a, uh, if your service, if your tests require more time, you can use both of them, both Google Colab and also Kaggle Notebooks. So if you want it, give it a try and let me know how it goes. And see you in the next time.